Hello, welcome to Maths with J. So for this matrix, we're going to start off by writing down the two eigenvalues. Then for each eigenvalue, we're going to calculate an eigenvector. And then we'll have a look at the theory behind how we were able to just write down the eigenvalues. OK, so let's use lambda 1 for one of the eigenvalues, and that's minus 1, and lambda 2 for the other eigenvalue, and that's 5. So you can see that the two eigenvalues here are the elements on the main diagonal, on the leading diagonal. And so what we'll do next is calculate for each of the eigenvalues an eigenvector. So we'll first of all look at the first one. So we know that when we're looking at um, eigenvectors, we've got a matrix A multiplying a, ve a vector x, giving us the eigenvalue multiplying the vector x. So here the matrix A is uh, this 2 by 2 matrix that we're dealing with here. So let's write that down. So we've got minus 1, 0, 2, 5, and the vector x is going to be x, y. And we're looking at minus 1 for our eigenvalue, and then the vector x again, so x, y. So that gives us two equations. If we look at the first one, that doesn't really tell us anything because it tells us that multiplying the first row of the matrix by the column vector, that gives us minus 1 times x on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we also get minus 1 times x. So negative x is equal to negative x, so that tells us nothing. So if we look at the second row of the matrix, that will give us something to work with. So 2x plus 5y is equal to minus 1 times y, so negative y. So rearranging that, we're going to have that 2x is minus 6y, so x is negative 3y. So we can choose any value for either y or x, and then calculate x or y for that value. So it's easier here to choose a value for y, and then work out what x is. So the simplest value to choose for y is 1. So we get, by taking y as 1, minus 3 times 1 is minus 3, so x will be minus 3. So minus 3, 1 is, now it's not the eigenvector, but it's an eigenvector. So we found an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue that we've chosen to start with. So when lambda is minus 1, then minus 3, 1 is an eigenvector. And all we need to do is the same sort of thing for our other eigenvalue. So the other eigenvalue is 5. So we're going to be writing down our matrix, so minus 1, 2, 5. Multiply it by the vector x, so x, y there. And this time we've got 5 x, y. So that's a x is lambda x. And we could look at the first row of the matrix. That would give us that, multiplying that by the, um, by the vector, we get minus 1 times x and nothing times y. So negative x is equal to 5 x. So that tells us that uh, 6 x is 0, so x is 0. Similarly, if we look at the second row of the matrix and multiply that by x, y, we get 2x plus 5y is 5y. So subtracting the 5y from both sides again gives us x is 0, because 2x is 0 gives us that x is 0. So we get um, the same result whichever line of the, uh, whichever row of the, of the matrix we use there. So what this means is that x must be 0, but y can be anything. So an eigenvector corresponding to having the eigenvalue 5 is, so we know that x must be 0, we can choose anything at all for y, so the simplest thing is to choose 1. So we have found two eigenvalues and an eigenvector corresponding to each of those eigenvalues. So the uh, first part of the question I just asked you to write down the eigenvalues. 
Now the reason why you could just do this is because it's a very special kind of matrix. So what we're going to do next is have a look at why that worked. So let's just have a look at um, a general case and that will mean that instead of that specific matrix we've got up there, let's have A, B, C and D for our matrix A. And we'll just rearrange this on the right hand side where we've got AX is lambda X. That's really the same as saying that AX is equal to lambda I times X. So I is the identity matrix. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can then subtract the lambda X from both sides and factorize. So if we do that, then we get A minus lambda I multiplying X gives us a zero vector. And then taking that one stage further, given that um, the vector x isn't zero, then the determinant of a minus lambda i must be equal to zero. And then that means if we're taking a as the matrix a, b, c, d, then the determinant of that, so we normally use straight lines to represent the determinant, so the determinant of a minus lambda i, well if we take away lambda times i, remember that um, i is 1, 0, 0, 1, so lambda times that will have lambdas on the, on the main diagonal there, so we'll have over here a minus lambda i, the determinant of it will be a minus lambda, b and c, c stay as they are, and d minus lambda. So we've taken lambda away on the, uh, the leading diagonal, and so the determinant is zero. So working out that determinant, we multiply on the leading diagonal first, so a minus lambda times d minus lambda, and then we subtract b times c, and that is what is equal to zero. So multiplying that out, negative lambda times negative lambda is lambda squared, then we've got minus lambda times a and minus lambda times d, so we can simplify that as minus a plus d times lambda. Then a times d and minus bc. So we've got plus ad minus bc is equal to zero. So let's just give ourselves a bit more space. And before we take this any further, let's just write down another way that you might be used to seeing this. A plus D is the trace of the matrix A, and AD minus BC is the determinant of the matrix A. So you may be used to seeing this equation, which is the characteristic equation, written like that. But what we're interested in at the moment is why in this special case we could just write down the two values of the eigenvalues, the two values for lambda. So you can see that in our example b was equal to zero. So in fact what we're looking at here would also work if c is equal to zero. In fact if either b or c is zero or if both of them are equal to zero. So the special case that we're looking at here is what happens when either the top right hand corner or the bottom left hand corner or both of those values are zero. So if that's the case, looking at our equation, we've got lambda squared and it's not going to affect the a plus d. But if b or c are zero, then you can see it is going to affect b times c. So if b equals 0 or c equals 0, then bc is 0. So our equation is just going to be this. It's only going to depend on the values on the leading diagonal, just the values of a and d. And now you can see that that will factorise as lambda minus a times lambda minus d is equal to 0. So that tells us that our two eigenvalues are a and d. So that's why we were able to write down lambda 1 as negative 1 and lambda 2 is 5.
the two eigenvalues will be the two values on the leading diagonal if either b or c or both of them are zero.